us all. We back at it again. The legend. Reverse his position on Donald Trump. Wow. The man, the myth, the legend. Well, I'm interested. So I mean, he didn't like gonna... him at first. Or didn't agree with him. I'm interested to see what's going to be said here. This is the mandatory subject, oh, this Donald Trump. Again. During the presidential campaign, you wrote a column, this is when you still had your column, that appeared under, under the headline, Choose Trump. He'd be easier to impeach. <laughs> <laughs> And you wrote that voters faced a choice between, I'm quoting you, two out-of-control people, one of whom is going to be president. And you said since Hillary Clinton would be the first woman chief executive, she'd be very difficult to impeach, but Trump would be easier to kick out, so vote for Trump. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. Now that he's been in office for a year, what do you make of him? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you got an old man Oh, does. gosh. You know, uh, let me say that, that just recently Walter Williams sent me a, a, a video of Donald Trump in his mid-30s being interviewed. Uh, and so I've had to uh, back off on one of the things I've said, which is that Trump is someone who has simply never grown up. He was very grown up in his mid-30s. <laughs> Speaking of retrogression. And, uh, and it's scary because how many people are more mature in their mid-30s than they are at age 70? All right. And, and given the trend line, how optimistic should we be about his uh, becoming more grown up as time goes on? In terms of, of the people he's uh, surrounded himself with, I think on the whole, they're a better bunch than either of the last two presidents had. So he has very good people. I think uh, Jim Mattis at the uh, uh, defense. Yeah, uh, but, 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 but there are other people uh, around him. And the question is, is he going to listen to them? Let me play you a brief excerpt of Donald Trump himself. This is from the State of the Union address this past January. This will be my first time. Somebody something I'm very power. proud of. African-American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever recorded. Hey! Hmm. What? Run that back! <laughs> was the what? Topic. Okay. Oh. I got a kiss there. Rate ever recorded. And unemployment stands a more. At my of Donald Trump himself. This is from the State of the Union address this past January. This will be my first time to hear it's something I'm very proud of. African-American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever recorded. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that ain't talked about enough. Why did he ain't clap? Okay. There he is. I'm talking about the people right oh there. Oh, my. He, he, he produces a statistic. Maybe the statistic isn't quite right. Either. Maybe no, it is. It is. It is. Yes. And there you see a shot. You see Republicans standing and applauding. And there you sh see a shot of Democrats who are sitting on their hands, including many members of the Black Caucus yes. in Congress. What do you make of that? Huh? I did that, see. Oh, as with so many other groups around the world. You didn't see the people not clapping? The leaders Let's examine that really quick. Right. It, was it was buku people. It was buku black people that not clapping. Right. Yeah, I saw that. Group. Let's examine that right here. <laughs> you don't see all these. Okay, I see this guy right here. He's this clapping. Guy. She's clapping. rubbing her chin right None now. None of them are clapping. He's not, she's not clapping? He's not clapping? No, no black no. people are clapping. She's rubbing her okay. chin. You can see her physically rubbing her chin right now. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're not clapping. Not, not even the white people. That's all like, okay. Oh, that's they terrible. They hate. They hate. Oh, that's boy. sick. He, he, he produces a statistic. Maybe uh, the statistic isn't quite right either. Maybe no, it is. It is. It is. Yes. And there you see a shot. You see Republicans standing and applauding. And there you <laughs> see a shot of Democrats who are sitting on their hands, including many members of the Black Caucus yes. in Congress. What do you make of that? I'm sorry. What the hell is Black Caucus? Like the, the, the black uh, people that make up Congress, I believe. Well, I know the I caucus. No I think about the caucus mountain. Right <laughs> <here>. <laughs> I hate this dude. <laughs> well, what is the caucus? Black caucus. That is messing me up, though. I've never heard of that before. The Black Caucus are congressional members. So what do they get out of niggas not having nothing? That's what I don't get. I don't know. I feel like that's weird not to clap, man. They just like, didn't clap because Donald Trump was speaking. They probably just really don't like Trump, bro. That's wild, bro. Can we look that up? Did Trump have the lawyers? No, I've heard that multiple times. And Let's if, look it up. If Thomas said it. The CBC is a nonpartisan body made up of African-American members of Congress. The CBC was created during a high point of the Black Power movement where African Americans wanted greater political influence and were gaining more seats in Congress. That is what the Black Caucus is. So that's them what wearing the African, African little color look. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. At the same time, people can say Trump had the lowest unemployment too because of the what he said, the Chinese virus. I do see a chart when uh, Donald Trump got in office. It spiked up where 
People had jobs. Hold on now. I think it's a confirmed fact. Thomas Sowell said, yo, it's confirmed. 2017, 18, and 19 felt like a different time in life. Yeah, well, it was seven years ago, so. When Trump was president, that was our first time living on our own. We was in the dorms. Yeah. I wouldn't ca count that as living on my own. Well, I was eight hours away from my house, so I was on my own. It's something I'm very proud of. African-American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever recorded. <laughs> Oh my! He 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 produces this. Maybe the statistic isn't quite right. Either. There maybe no. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. And there you see a shot. Wow. You see Republicans standing yeah, well, and applauding. And there you see a shot of Democrats who are sitting on their hands, including many members of the Black Caucus. Yes. In Congress, what do you make of that? That, as with so many other groups around the world, the leaders of groups that are lagging are often themselves the one of the biggest handicaps of those groups. Wow because they have to depict the problems uh, in ways Damn. that will allow them to play the role of rescuers. Damn! And so there'll be no talk about how you can do this or that for yourself. There'll be talk about what we can get the government to deliver for you. Damn! You know, that, that, that's that was a great point, A lot man. of words and, and things that have bad effects. And that's true not only with blacks in the United States, it's true of uh, people in, uh, lower income people in England and, uh, and elsewhere. No, that was a scary point right there. What did he say? We'll write back. We're going to write back. That was so good of a point. He pretty much, he said, they didn't clap because uh, they want young person people. I never met introduced they want himself problems to him. so they can handle it and, and be like they're the hero. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah we here right. for the same. Let him hear. Let him hear. Let him hear. That was actually, I hear that again. This is the mandatory subject. Including many members of the Black Caucus in Congress. What do you make of that? That, as with so many other groups around the world, the leaders of groups that are lagging are often themselves the, one of the biggest handicaps of those groups. Damn. Because they have to depict the problems uh, uh, in ways that will allow them to play the role of rescuers. <sighs> and so there'll be no talk about how you can do this or that for yourself. There'll be talk about what we can get the government to deliver for you. And usually hey. that, that, that's <laughs> a lot of words and, and things that have bad effects. I ain't gonna lie. And that's true not only with blacks in the United States, it's true of he spoke uh, facts. In, uh, lower income people in England and, uh, and else. Thomas, Thomas is spitting too Thomas different. Is, Thomas has said he, a lot. He was spitting on that but one. That, one just, news, that, nice that gave me chills a little bit with that one. It's, I, like, it's like whenever like, if you got a coach, right? No matter what you do, every rep, he say, good job, good job. But you're not, it's not gonna help. But when he get on your ass and tell you the truth, yeah. you might not hear it good, but it's the truth. It's gonna make you better. Sometimes <sighs> the truth hurts, but you to progress, you gotta hear it. Mr. Soul. Excellent, excellent, excellent take, man. I I agree, man. He he spoke a lot. It's a handicap, you know, because a lot of uh, leaders or people that they prop up as leaders try to perpetuate the victim mentality. Oh yeah, more people oh, need to be victims. like souls, though. We need to rely on people like Joe Biden to save us. They present you themselves. Ain't black if you didn't vote for he's Joe looking Biden. at he's looking at the leader for the leader and for what they've done and not just the party, man. That's why people need to be more like soul. Because he even he said I didn't I like him Thomas at first. Soul. Or he Thomas didn't Soul. disagree with him, and then you know, yeah. as time went on, Thomas So is he to, changed to, his mind. That to, was to thank for my great for awakening. President. Nah, for real. Shout out Thomas So for my great awakening. It was somebody in the comments Yoda. trying to discredit Thomas. <laughs> what for <laughs> real? How many? Yeah. How many? Uh, you know them. You know them degrees he got. Them again. woke people in the comments. Two hundred. He's a crazy man. He wrote a couple books. He's a book writer. An author. Wait, isn't he like ninety right now too? Yeah, he old I as hell. He was pretty right old now. in that. <laughs> Thomas Sowell has I'll make a kids book tonight University of Chicago, Howard and Columbia So he's a pretty smart guy Let's see what, what degrees he got from each He got a PhD from he Chicago born in 1930 uh, A master's from Columbia University And a bachelor's from Harvard This, this guy's right a here, freaking beast He shows animal. that it's no excuse 1930, no. he went through it all The worst of it He made them like him Yeah, he's so forced well, he, he different now oh, He didn't go to Harvard, he went to Howard University. Wow. Okay. He went to HBCU. Yes, wow. for his yeah. bachelor's. Shout he got a, a master's at Sh Columbia, which is an Ivy League. And he went to University of Chicago, which is very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Prestigious. Prestigious, indeed. You know what's crazy? That interview that he was talking about, that might actually be it right, right there. there. Yeah, that's what I was <laughs> That's crazy. I we might that. need to watch that one day. It says the average 
acceptance rate. I mean, the acceptance rate at University of Chicago is six percent. It's the number six school in the nation according Damn. to the U.S. Huh? And the average GPA is four point four eight percent. It says it's an extremely selective school. If you get into that mother, you smart and you graduate. And I bet the graduation rate a hundred percent. Hold on, hold on. Wow. Sorry. He was able to go to that school, get a PhD during Jim Crow law. This was during the sixties. All right, bro. We don't know when that. It have to be because he's in his twenties. So in the twenties, right, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. Nineteen sixty-eight. Yeah, it I had to be. I just, I, just, I, just, I just googled it to confirm. It had to be. Wait, that's when he went to school. That's, that's when he Jim got Crow. his PhD. Nineteen. So be. he was 38 when he got it then, because then I said he was born in 1930. Yeah, he had to be in his 20s. Well, I'm gonna go back and be Tom and Saul. So he went through <laughs> Jim Crow laws and went to a prestigious school and got a degree. No, yeah, that shows right there. You talk to no people excuse. now. Oh, there ain't no nothing. He was I can 38 do. when he got his PhD. Actually, yeah, he was born in 1930s, 1968 when he got the PhD. Is 38, 40 years old. Actually, I used to have this this teacher. She told me she was like, you know, today's kids worry too much in that. Like she used to go to like school semester by semester. She said she used to like go semester. Take like a year off, go a semester, take a year off, go a semester, take a year off. Cause she said somebody like was coming to her balls up crying, was like, I'm not gonna graduate on time. And she was just like messed up about that. Cause she said back then, like they weren't really even worried about that. It was just like, just go back next semester. <laughs> well, we got social media and yeah, you keep seeing everybody, about, yeah, everybody, you know, being on schedule with all their peers. Yeah, life like a marathon, that. man. I got a question. Y'all life think, is a marathon. I don't think social media like pushing our society forward kind of faster. I I think it's not. I think social media is extremely toxic. It is. I think Especially it's extremely toxic. Wake up and watch it every day. Because there's fake news and people bite on it. It's like lots of negativity and degeneracy and all type of bad stuff. I think it's extremely toxic. And you toxic. know, but, Apple yeah, put that time limit on it. Nobody I'm, I'm going to keep it 100, but it still give you Ignore. like, it still have like, you know, positives. Because like you, you're allowed to see stuff that you're not allowed to see. You know, see. If you have self-control, I mean, I mean, you can I use mean, it in a good I mean, way. The, the, the premise, and minuses. Yeah, the premise of uh, social media, like the connection with people. People that you wouldn't meet and seeing things that you wouldn't you normally wouldn't see and all that stuff that part is what like built social media but what it's like ballooned into yeah this information that we I receive know, man. is the good side of social media but if you get on tiktok all on conspiracy theories and yeah man yeah, it's, 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 it's you, your anxiety stuff. could definitely right yeah, people comparing media. their life to others who their life isn't what it really is they're just making it seem like that for social media you have to like limit your stimuli with social media because like you can get like overstimulated taking in all that type of information that's yeah. why i say it's toxic because there's a lot of toxic stuff you see and that can like overstimulate your brain. Like you keep seeing it, you keep seeing it, you keep seeing it. You're going to start to like think it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 